The president said that his powers are limited without congressional support. So just what protections did he put in place with his executive order today? And what do they mean for women living in states with abortion bans? Let's go ahead and bring in ABC News legal contributor and University of Baltimore law professor Kimberly Whaley. Kimberly, thank you so much for joining us. Let's get right into it here because it's a big day. Does today's executive order change anything for women living in states with abortion bans? Not immediately, no, Geo. All it does is ask the Secretary of Health and Human Services to report back on what can be done to maximize access to reproductive care. To It also asks the Federal Trade Commission to look at privacy questions. It reiterates the Biden administration's uh, support for contraceptives, which under Obamacare are free across the country. And it also marshals private lawyers. So it says it will marshal private lawyers to help women in lawsuits relating to the ambiguities under state law that we're just going to see pop up over and over again going forward. So Kim, let's say that you're traveling to another state for a procedure. What kind of protections are we talking about here? So great question in that the Constitution has been construed for over a century by the Supreme Court as protecting the right to travel between states. So what we're hearing in terms of states banning travel for abortion is setting up a conflict between state law and federal law. It's the kind of thing you need lawyers for to to basically go to court and say this person has the right to travel under the constitution but you know what everything really is in flux or a lot of things are in flux with this supreme court majority i can't sitting here promise that if that conflict were to go to the supreme court the supreme court would adhere to its you know decades of precedent saying that there's a constitutional right to travel because those words are not in the constitution so again one of the problems with Dobbs, whatever your position is on abortion, is the uncertainty. Lots is in flux, and it's going to fall disproportionately on women and girls who need access to this kind of reproductive care. And Kim, the president included an order about patient privacy. What is the concern there? Well, we've also heard that Google has already said it's going to basically remove uh, information relating to where you are for if you're seeking abortion access. So what the president is saying here is given we're seeing like in Texas, bounty hunter laws kick in. That is private citizens have the ability to go to court to sue pro abortion providers um, for giving this kind of reproductive care. Essentially, Joe Biden is saying we don't want women's use of the internet to be used to track them to then mm. get legal action against them or providers relating to their access to abortion care. So trying to make your searches, if you're one of those people, private in addition to what's already covered under HIPAA and other federal laws relating to patient privacy. And Kim, the president also ordered the Department of Health and Human Services to protect and expand access to medication abortion. So if you're living in a state with an abortion ban, what does that mean when you're talking about medication abortion? So 22 years ago, the Food and Drug Administration authorized the use of a certain combination of drugs to terminate pregnancies up until 10 weeks. Texas has already banned the use of medication for abortions at seven weeks. So here again, we have another novel constitutional clash. There's something in the Constitution called the Supremacy Clause that says, you know what, FDA would supersede what states do because federal law is supreme. But again, unclear now when it comes to uh, the use of medications for early term abortions, whether these state laws are going to be uh, upheld as overriding FDA's approval for the use of drugs for this purpose up until 10 weeks. Another kind of gray area now that won't be resolved until, unless and until it goes to the court. And again, I don't know that this Supreme Court's gonna adhere to precedent. Uh, and that kind of uncertainty really throws a monkey wrench in the constitution, as well as in the lives of individual women and their providers moving forward when it comes to this kind of care. Yeah, and I'm certain we'll be talking about this for weeks to come. All right, ABC News legal contributor and University of Baltimore law professor, Kimberly Whaley. Thank you so much for taking the time to go through this with us.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.